Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert teachers at e2language.com. All right, in this one, we're going to look at reading, reorder paragraph, method 2.0, just for your interest. If you're watching this on YouTube, you only get half of these new methods lessons. All of them are on the platform at e2language.com. Okay, let's get started. So this is what you're going to see on test day. On the left-hand side, you're going to see some sentences. They're all jumbled up. You need to put them into the correct sequence on the right-hand side. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, like all of these tasks, you can look at it and think, that's pretty easy. But if you want to maximize your scores, you really need to understand what's going on behind the scenes here. And with language, there's always a lot going on behind the scenes. Cool, all right, let's just go through the facts of this task. So on test day, you're going to get two or three of these. Uh, there's no integrated scoring, it just contributes points to your reading score. But as we'll find out, because we're going to look deeply at what a paragraph is, uh, and if you do watch this lesson, it's going to improve your writing score dramatically, especially for write essay, because I'm gonna show you how to construct paragraphs, how sentences link to one another, how you get that flow and sequential logic, etc. And once you understand that, you'll be able to nail this task, but then when you go to write your essay, you're gonna think, oh wow, that was really helpful. So even though this contributes points just to reading, keep watching. Just with regard to time management, uh, remember in the reading section, you need to manage your own time. The individual tasks are not individually timed. You have overall time. So with this particular task, we recommend that you spend between one and three minutes max. Really, you should be able to do these in about one minute to 90 seconds, okay? And by the end of this, you probably can. Let's start by talking about scoring, okay? Scoring's pretty straightforward with this one. Let's say you have five sentences. Most of the paragraphs you'll see on test day will have five sentences. And you get all of the five sentences in the correct sequence. So therefore you'll get 100%. Easy peasy. Let's look at this scenario. Let's say you get the first and second sentence in the wrong sequence, but you get three, four, and five correct. This will be marked as 50%. Let me tell you why. Okay, so you're not actually counting the sentences. You're counting the sentences that have the correct uh, sequencing here. So three connects to four here. However, one does not connect to three. So that won't count. Four connects to five, for example. And there's four possible connections. Therefore, you got two out of four. So you got 50%. Let's look at the next scoring scenario. Let's say you do five and two, well that's wrong. Two and one doesn't connect, one and three doesn't connect, but three and four do connect. And even though you got all of the first sentences in the wrong order, but you got the final two, you'll still get 25%. So uh, that's how the scoring works. But what's really critical here, and as we'll learn uh, as we go on through this lesson, is that it's important that you get the first sentence right. Because once you get that first sentence right, that independent sentence, all of the other ones sort of hang off that, okay? We'll learn how to do that in a minute. Okay, let's look at the method, but what we're doing really is we're looking at the theory of what is a paragraph and how do you construct a good paragraph? What makes up a good coherent paragraph? That's the secret behind this task. So let's talk about a thing called paragraph coherence. And what I, mean by co what I mean by coherence is that the sentences lead into one another, okay? There's a nice flow from beginning to end. And we're gonna focus on key nouns, pronouns, linking words, and we're gonna look at some different paragraph structures that you might see on test day. Let's start by looking at key nouns. So check this paragraph out and look at the repetition of key nouns. So here we go. The first sentence says gold, a precious metal, is prized for two important characteristics. First of all, gold has a lustrous beauty that is resistant to corrosion. Therefore, it is suitable for jewelry, coins, and ornamental purposes. 
Another important characteristic of gold is its usefulness to industry and science. For many years, it has been used in hundreds of industrial applications, such as photography and dentistry. So this is just one part of what makes up a good paragraph, is the repetition of key nouns. Now, keep in mind that they may not be just in the, in, in the, in the same form each time, okay? So the word gold is, it only has one form. There's not an adjectival form or a verb form or a uh, gerund form or anything like that. It's just gold, gold, gold. But let's say you had another word like um, beautiful, for example. Let's say that uh, it's not a key noun, but let's say that's a key word. But then let's say beauty is the key noun, okay? But then you might see the form of beautiful or beautifully, for example, beautifully. So there are different, it could change word form as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, now, oftentimes it won't just be key noun, key noun, key noun. What it will be will be key noun, key noun, synonym, key noun, synonym, or something like that. And a synonym means a similar word or a word that has the same meaning, okay? A same or very similar meaning. Let's have a look at this one here. Here's a little activity. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. I want you to identify the key noun in sentence one, and I want you to identify the synonym of that key noun in sentence two. Here we go, see how you go. Okay, so what do we have here? We have key noun here would be surroundings, right? And then if you look here, we can see environment is the synonym, the word that means something very similar. So the surroundings in which we carry out our daily lives are important to us. We are continually aware of our environment. We could say surroundings again, but this time we've chosen to use a synonym. So two things to keep in mind so far. One, the repetition of nouns throughout the paragraph, that's helpful. Now the noun that might take a single form or it might take multiple forms, okay? But still have the exact same meaning. Or it might use synonyms. Cool, stick with me, let's keep going. By the end of this, you'll understand it all. Okay, next one is pronouns. So we're still talking about paragraphs, how we create a well-constructed or coherent paragraph. In that case, we need to discuss pronouns. So let's have a look. Here is a sentence or a couple of sentences. The first one has no pronouns and it sounds weird. Second sentence or sentences have pronouns and it sounds natural, normal, it's well written. Let's have a look at this first sentence with no pronouns. So the boss says, sorry, the boss said that the boss was in a hurry. The boss was late for picking the boss's wife up at the airport, but the boss did not know where the airport was. That's weird, we don't do that in English. We don't just repeat noun, repeat noun, repeat noun. Often, or all the time, we use pronouns to replace those nouns. The boss said that he was in a hurry. He was late for picking up his wife at the airport, but he did not know where it was. It referring to the airport, he referring to the boss. There you go, that's how we use pronouns. Let's now look at the in a paragraph. So we're back to this paragraph about gold, and we know that gold is a precious metal, gold has a lustrous beauty, it is suitable for jewelry. Another important characteristic of gold is its usefulness. For many years, it has been used in hundreds of industrial applications. So keep this in mind when you're looking at those jumbled up sentences, because you're gonna have key nouns, but then you're going to have pronouns that refer back to those key nouns and it might be a pronoun like it, or its, or they, or theirs, or them, or his, or hers, or whatever it is. Lots of different little pronouns that reference those key nouns. Okay, this is another way that we can understand the coherence or structure or sequence of a paragraph, and that is looking at linking words. So let's look back at the gold paragraph. And we can see gold, a precious metal, blah, blah, blah. First of all, gold has a lustrous beauty, blah, blah, blah. Therefore, it is suitable for blah, blah, blah. 
This one doesn't really have a connecting word. This one has a such as to introduce an example. So there are a few examples there. What you don't want to do on test day is just use linking words to reorder the paragraph, okay? You need to think more critically and more deeply about the meaning of the paragraph. The linking words are there to sort of help you. Like for example, if you see one that says first or firstly, you know that that's going to be BBB come at the top of the paragraph, whereas one that says finally will come down at the bottom of the paragraph. But still, you've got other sentences to deal with. You don't know if there's one that comes before the first and after the finally. Who knows? Okay? Use it just to guide you a little bit. You need to keep all of this information or understand this all if you're going to do well. Okay, now we're going to go a little bit deeper and we're going to look at some different paragraph structures, because there are different ways that you can structure a paragraph, okay? Let's take a look. So, first of all, if you want to uh, sequence a paragraph logically, if you want logical sequencing, you can structure or sequence your paragraph according to time or chronology. You can structure or sequence a paragraph according to order of importance that is most important information at the top and least important information at the bottom. And you can also create contrasting paragraphs. That is, there'll be a major contrast, like half a paragraph will be about one thing and the other half will be about another thing, or they might just sort of go one thing, other thing, one thing, other thing, one thing, other thing, like that. Let's take a look at the chronological one or the time one. Okay, so you can structure a paragraph through uh, uh, by time from most recent uh, information to the oldest information or oldest information to most recent information. Here's an example. Many of the ethnic groups that live in the Hawaiian Islands today arrived at different times in history. Most of them came to work as laborers on the sugar and pineapple plantations. The first group arrived in the 1850s when the Chinese came. They were followed by the Japanese in the 1880s and then the Koreans and Filipinos in the 1900s. The immigration process continues today, but now many workers arrive from Mexico and Central America. So you can see how the time sequences, the dates, the years, the, the today, for example, have been used in this paragraph to show a sequence of time from earliest to most recent. Cool. Let's practice this. But before you do that, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not yet a subscriber to our wonderful PT Academic YouTube channel, then you should click that subscribe button. The reason being is that we do, uh, we release really good videos and you'll be notified about that and we'll show up in your newsfeed and your life will just generally become much, much better. Okay, let's do a practice one. I'm gonna give you 90 seconds. This paragraph is out of sequence. The correct sequence will be in a time sequence. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind the repetition of key nouns, the use of pronouns, and the use of linking words, everything that we've just discussed. Keep this in mind for the next 90 seconds as you reorder this, see how you go.
All right, let's take a look at the answer here. It was a chronological paragraph order. So the first sentence says, Astronomers claim that a star begins as a cloud of hydrogen and helium. As the cloud, we've got a couple of uh, repeated nouns here. Now, the, this could be a pronoun as they move about, but the author has chosen to repeat that noun, so keep that in mind. As the cloud moves about, it collects bits of dust and more floating gases. Then the cloud begins to warm as more dust, so we've got dust and dust, more dust, and gases are pulled into it. And we know that this is the, that follows on here because we have more dust. After a long period of time, so here we go as a sequencing, time sequencing reference, after a long period of time, as the cloud becomes denser, okay, because everything's being pulled into it, pulled into it, denser, heat and friction cause the atoms to explode. That is how a star is born. So it begins here, then something happens after a long period of time, and then the final outcome is that is how a star is born. How did you go with that one? Did you get it right? Hopefully you did, and hopefully those little hints that we've been talking about are starting to sort of make sense to you. Hopefully you're now looking at paragraphs and going, ah, yeah, okay, repetition of nouns, use of pronouns. I see where the linking words work. It's still pretty, pretty difficult because you do need to have the vocabulary there and the grammar to understand the sentences ultimately, but this can help. Okay, let's look at the second way to logically sequence a paragraph, and that is by order of importance. So we have a little hierarchy here, this little up, uh, upside down pyramid. No, this little pyramid. Here we go. So. This particular paragraph is structured from most important information to least important information. Let's have a read. It says, it is important to plan your trips carefully. And before we look at the way that this is structured, I do just wanna point out a pronoun here. Look at this. This paragraph actually begins with the pronoun it. Isn't that weird? It doesn't actually begin with a noun. Because sometimes in English we say, isn't it a lovely day? Isn't what a lovely day? It, anyway, this one's a good example. It is important to plan your trips carefully. Just keep that in mind. Sometimes the topic sentence, the first sentence, the independent sentence can actually start with a pronoun. Weird. All right, anyway, back to the order of importance. It is important to plan your trips carefully. For example, when you go on a trip, you need to think about how much money to allot for things like transportation, food, and hotels. In particular, hotels and transportation on trips can be expensive if you don't book them with plenty of time in advance. Next most important thing, not the most, the next most important thing. Another thing to plan for is how much time you wanna spend sightseeing and doing different sorts of activities. Even though you may want to do everything, you have to remember that there are only so many hours in the day. In sum, planning your trip carefully will allow you to have a more relaxed trip. Cool, so this paragraph here talked about the most important thing about money and planning and saving money, and then it talked about spending time on sightseeing. So they sort of had two features there. Let's do another practice, and we're gonna practice the next paragraph will be constructed as an order of importance. Okay, you have 90 seconds to solve this one.
Okie dokie, how did you go? Let's take a look at this. Okay, there are actually sort of, I won't say two ways to structure this. Um, there was, there are two ways to structure this, but there's a better way and a slightly not so good way. Okay, this is the correct uh, sequence here. And again, it's by order of importance. So a house is by far the most expensive item anyone will ever buy. Worryingly, the median house price in Australia is now well above $700,000. A car is probably the next most expensive object on the list. Most cars, luckily, are far less expensive than houses. Still, these two things alone will cost you next to a million dollars. Cool, yeah, there was another way that you could structure it by putting the um, house and then a car is probably next, then the two examples, but it's better to have the example after the sort of um, topic sentence there. Cool, how did you go? Hopefully you got that and hopefully you could see the inherent structure of the paragraph relating to importance. Okay, the final paragraph structure type is by contrast. So contrast, is by ordering ideas by comparison. We're comp comparing two things here, okay? Let's read this paragraph. Alcoholism is a disease that the non-alcoholic has a hard time understanding and the two lifestyles are quite different. The non-alcoholic has a lifestyle that involves family and friends. He enjoys going to family functions and interacting with his loved ones. In contrast, the alcoholic tries to avoid family functions unless alcohol is offered. So we're comparing alcoholics versus non-alcoholics here. And it's sort of, as I mentioned at the start, you can have two halves of the paragraph. First half will be dedicated to one topic. Second half will be dedicated to another topic. Or you can sort of chop and change with each sentence. Let's do some more practice. Okay, this is a contrast type paragraph. You have 90 seconds to solve this one. Okay, let's look at the answer here. So 1C, there is a key characteristic which distinguishes plants from animals. Green plants are able to manufacture their own food from substances in the environment. This process is known as photosynthesis. Here's the contrast. In contrast, animals get their food either directly from plants or indirectly by eating animals which have eaten plants. Therefore, the difference between plants and animals is quite significant. Cool, hopefully you got that one right. Okay, we've talked about overall paragraph structures and the features of well-written paragraphs, which you'll see on test day and which you're going to be tested on. But within paragraphs, of course, or what paragraphs are made of are sentences. And it's also important that you understand sentence construction or the features of sentences themselves. This will also help you to solve these paragraphs and also keep this stuff in mind when you're writing your essay as I said at the beginning. Sentences and paragraphs are in effect your essay. Okay so let's read these two sentences and we're going to see how sentences join together. 
What makes a good flow from sentence to sentence? What makes a good logical or, um, yeah, yeah, again, a sort of coherent sentence structure? So, gold has a lustrous beauty that is resistant to corrosion, therefore it is suitable for jewellery, coins, and ornamental purposes. Why do these two sentences flow so nicely into each other, and why are they sort of connected like a nice handshake? That's because of sentence structure, okay? This is a little bit overly simplified, but I think it will apply to actually most reorder paragraphs that you'll see on test day. They're all going to have, or not all, most are going to have sentence types that are subject, verb, object, okay? And how information travels is, let me show you. Okay, so information can travel, for example, from the object of the sentence to the subject of the following sentence. It can travel from the subject of the first sentence to the subject of the second sentence. That might be, again, a repetition of a noun, the uses of, of a synonym, a pronoun, something like that. You can also do uh, object to object, again, key noun, repetition, pronouns, etc. It might be subject to, what have I done? Uh, subject to this object here. And even verb to verb might work as well, or even verb to object. Anyway, this is starting to get quite messy, but what we're seeing is the transfer of an idea in the first sentence appearing as an idea in the second sentence, either as the subject, the verb, or the object, as a noun, or a pronoun, or a synonym. There you go, that's how that works there. Uh, so just when you're reading, just start to pay attention. When you're reading paragraphs, just sort of have a think metacognize, that is, reflect upon your experience and think, oh yeah, okay, so the subject in this one is uh, gold, whatever, and that sort of connects across to the pronoun it, or uh, it can't corrode, uh, the synonym non-tarnished, whatever it is. You can start to see how good writers actually connect these things across. Okay, we've looked at paragraphs, we've looked at sentences, now let's just look even deeper within a sentence itself, because what is a sentence made of? It's made of vocabulary and grammar. So let's look at grammar here. Oh, by the way, if you're struggling with grammar, you should check this out. This is called Grammar Review. It's on a website that we've just created called e2school.com. It's a brand new website. It's 100% free. Well, this course is 100% free, so anyone can sign up. I'm one of the teachers there, so if you do want to improve your grammar, right from the sort of easy beginning stuff, right up to the complex stuff, check this website out. There are expert teachers, fun activities, it's a really effective way to improve your grammar. So check out e2school.com. Okay, so when we're looking at grammar within the sentence, we can see something like a plural noun, for example, uh, let's just say it's about zebras, whatever, some sort of noun, uh, becomes the zebras. So it might start off by saying zebras are like black and white horses, the zebras of West Africa, blah, blah, blah. So it starts with zebras and then the zebras. So we can see some sort of indication here that this would be sentence one and this would be sentence two because of the use of uh, the definite article the. And we can also see here that um, a can become the. So we might say something like um, 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 a zebra named Peter <laughs> can become the zebra named Peter in the second sentence there, okay? So, a uh, can become the. So, sentence one might use the indefinite article the, sentence two might use the definite article the. Cool, so there's a little bit of grammar. Let's look a little bit further here. Uh, let's look at the use of pronouns. What are they called? Demonstrative pronouns, right. So again, we might start with zebras, the zebras, the zebras, or those zebras. That can happen like that. These are all plural. Or we might have a zebra, the zebra, this zebra, or that zebra. So keep that in mind. That might be one, two, three. Again, this is not how you solve reorder paragraphs. This is a hint. What you need to do in order to solve them is to put all of this information we've been talking about 
together. So you fully understand the paragraph and you understand all of the hints and then you can go, aha, that one goes first, that one goes next, etc. like that. Okay, so we've looked at the background theory of paragraphs themselves, we've looked at sentences, we've looked at grammar. Now let's just look at the method for how to solve reorder paragraph, keeping all of that in mind. And this is how it works. Okay, so what you need to do is find the independent sentence first. That is, you're going to look at five sentences. One of these sentences is going to stand alone. It's not going to refer back to any of the other sentences. In and of itself, that one independent sentence will make meaning. If you looked at it and you had these five sentences cut up into pieces, you could pick up the independent sentence, read it, and it would make sense. If you picked up sentence three, it wouldn't really make sense because it needed sentence two and sentence two needed sentence one to make sense, right? So find that independent topic sentence. Once you've done that, you need to use your understanding of everything we've talked about, from key noun repetition and the use of synonyms, how nouns turn into pronouns, the use of linking words, and how subject, verb, object uh, transfers information between the subject and the object and the verb and the object or whatever it is and also how grammar works those little grammatical hints and again you don't want to just use one of these hints you want to combine them all then you'll have a thorough understanding of how the paragraph structures work you can put them back together and feel pretty confident that you got it right okay now i get to do my advertisements. So please keep watching. Here we go. If you are struggling on your PTE, if you've failed the PTE before, or if you haven't taken the PTE before and you're a bit concerned, you're a bit worried, maybe your English isn't very good, maybe it is, but you just want to make sure you do it right because the test is expensive and it kind of sucks when you don't get the scores you don't want. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, sign up for free at e2language.com. It's really good. We've got lots of live classes tutorials, smart questions, speaking and writing feedback. All of the methods lessons are on the platform there. You can sign up for free, so check that out. Just go to www.e2language.com. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that was helpful, and I hope you pass your test as soon as possible. See ya.